Hi folks, good to see you. Uh, God bless everybody out there. My name is Jason. Uh, my website is jasonbirdspreacher.com and you can get me on Facebook and Twitter and also Royal Blood Ministries you can get on website and Facebook and Twitter. Okay. So we're looking at who wrote the Gospels by Dr. Timothy McGrew. You can get this PDF paper, read it, digest it and get it within a few Read it within a few minutes, half an hour, and you'll get a good grasp of this, um, this uh, article. Uh, we're looking at who wrote the Gospels. This is part of the ministry on a Saturday where I'm trying to encourage pastors, preachers, evangelists to meet, to pray together. So um, if people are not coming, I'll just do the videos and people can watch them uh, online. Okay, so... God is good. God is good. We have a good God. So I'm just going to go through this and read bits here and there and commentate on it. And you can get this PDF and download it and read it yourself. It's called Who Wrote the Gospels? Dr. Timothy McGrew. Uh, we're going to be looking in the next couple of weeks on the issue of the canon, the formation of the canon. It's something that I keep thinking about, meditating on and trying to provide resources on uh, at the moment, something on my mind. So, uh, And I'll be making videos on other theological topics, but this is particularly for um, the Bible study and apologetic ministry on a Saturday. People want to come and learn about the Christian faith. Okay. Um, Dr. Bart Ehrman said some books such as the Gospels have been written anonymously only later to be ascribed to certain authors who probably did not write them, Apostle and Friends of the Apostles. Bart Ehrman, Jesus Interrupted, 2011, page 101 to 102. Richard Dawkins says the Gospels are not reliable accounts of what happened in the history of the real world. All were written long after the death of Jesus and all after the Epistle of Apostles, Epistles of Paul which mention almost none of the alleged facts of Jesus' life. Nobody knows who the four gospel evangelists were, but they almost certainly never met Jesus personally. Richard Dawkins, The God Delusion, 2006. So, St. Augustine wrote this about criterion of authorship. Why does not one doubt the genuineness, genuineness of the books that attributed to Hippocrates? Because there is a succession of testimonies to the books from the time of Hippo Hippocrates to the present day, which makes it unre unreasonable either now or hereafter to have any doubt on the subject. How do we know the authorship of the works of Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, Viro and other similar writers, but by the unbroken chain of evidence? And so we have Tertullian of Carthage, 207 AD, Clement of Alexandria, 180 AD, Irenaeus of Lyons, 180 AD, Moratorium Fragment, 170 AD, Justin Martyr, 180 AD, Papias, 125 AD. So, in other words, we have multiple uh, attestation of early historical sources that refer to who wrote the books, basically. So we have uh, the evidence of Tertullian, 207 AD. The Gospels were written, he said, by Matthew and John, who were apostles, and Luke and Mark, who were apostolic men. men. Mark's Gospel is, is the second of Peter's preaching, and he writes more on the topic. So, I mean, that should be pretty conclusive, but um, we go on. The evidence of Clement of Alexandria, 180. Mark wrote his gospel by request of his knowledge of Peter preaching at Rome. Matthew and Luke were published first. They are the gospels containing the genealogies. And John's gospel was the last one to appear. It was written at the urging of his friends. Then we have Irenaeus of Laoyans. Matthew, he says, was, this is 180 AD. Matthew's gospel was the first one written. It was originally written in the Hebrew dialect. Mark, a disciple of Peter, handed down his Gospel, what Peter had preached, and Luke's com a companion of Paul recommended in a book the gospel preached by him. John, the disciple of the Lord, published a gospel while living at, at Ephesus in Asia. 
Note, Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp, who was himself a disciple of the Apostle John. So at this point, there is only one human link separating our source from the lifetime of one of Jesus' apostles. The Moratorium Fragment 170. The early part of this text is lost, but virtually all scholars agree that it referred to Matthew and Mark. Luke, the physician and companion of Paul, wrote the gospel from the reports of others since he had not personally seen Jesus. John, who was an eyewitness, wrote his gospel after the rest at the urging of some of his friends. These are what Irenaeus wrote. Just in Martyr, in 150, the Christians possessed memoirs of Jesus and were called the Gospels. The evidence of Papias. Excuse me. Mark, having been, been the interpreter of Peter, wrote down what Peter had preached accurately, though not necessarily in order. Matthew wrote the oracles of a reference to his whole gospel, to the sayings of Jesus in the Hebrew language. So what we have here from this multiple attestation is in Tertullian in Carthage, Clement in Alexandria, Irenaeus in France and Papias in Asia Minor. All these different areas of the ancient world were referring to the Gospels as written by the authors, which is pretty powerful historical evidence really. Then we have not only these early church fathers that reference who wrote them, we have quotations, earlier quotations, of the four Gospels, which show you that they were around early in, uh, in the mid and late uh, first century. Ignatius' letter to Polycarp, 170 AD, in all circumstances be wise as a serpent, and perpetually harmless as a dove, which is a quotation of Matthew 10, 16. And we'll give one more by Polycarp. Polycarp, letter to the Philippians, 108 uh, AD, Blessed are the poor and those persecuted for righteousness for theirs, righteousness sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of God, Luke 6.20. And I could give you more uh, quotations there uh, to back it up. So he summarises, excuse me, he summarises, the four Gospels and Acts are used copiously by the early church fathers, taking us back to within the lifetime of the Apostle John himself. Even heretics tattily acknowledged their genuineness, which they would not have done if they could help it. Just in Martyr 150 AD tells us how the early church operated. This is significant information. On the day called Sunday, all who live in the cities or the country gather together to one place, and the memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are read as long time permits. So here, it's showing that there was a culture of reading these Gospels and literature in the church uh, early on in its history. Excuse me, get tired? Excuse me. Objection one. From Matthew's use of the third person pronoun, Matthew's Gospel is written completely in the third person, even when this Gospel narrates the event of Matthew being called to become a disciple, it talks about him, not about me, but um, and Jesus interrupted. Matthew 9.9, 9, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the booth and he said to him, follow me, and he rose and followed him. So why would Matthew write a biography of Jesus and say, Matthew did this, when Matthew's writing about Matthew. And uh, Augustine says, Around the year AD 400, Augustine encountered this very argument from the Manchaean Faustus. He writes, Faustus thinks himself wonderfully clever in proving that Matthew was not the writer of this gospel, because when speaking of his own election, he says not, He saw me and said to me, Follow me, but he saw him and said to him, Follow me. This must have been said either in ignorance or from a design to mislead. Faustus can hardly be so ignorant as not to have read or heard that narrators, when speaking of themselves, often used a construction as if speaking of another. It is more probable that Faustus wished to bewilder those more ignorant than himself in the hope of getting hold on not a few unacquainted with these things.
August it says, excuse me. Just getting getting a bit tired, sorry. There was in the army of certain Exophon, an Athenian, who accompanied the army, neither as a general, nor as a captain, nor as a private soldier, but Proximus, an old acquaintance, had sent for him. Exophon and Abasis 3.1. So this is talking about Exnophon and Exnophon wrote it. And uh, we can go into all the objections uh, in it, but I've just given you a bit of historical information that early on the four Gospels were accepted. So you can go into detail of this, read this, and study it yourself. Who wrote the Gospels by Timothy McGrew? God bless you. Thank you for listening. I'm getting a bit tired now, so. I think I'm going to wrap it up in a minute. I'm going to make one video or two short videos and then wrap it up. So thank you for listening and God bless you. Take care.